Humjumbo, good morning. Uh, Mr. President, distinguished guests, all protocols observed. It is so great to be here this morning. When I first came to this development, uh, that building, which is so spectacular, was a hole in the ground just two years ago. So I think, first of all, round of applause for CCI Global and everything that you have done here. And also a round of applause for Tatu City, who has been an amazing host and amazing development partner. And I'm also thrilled to see so many American companies in the CCI facility. I think many of you know that I've been traveling around Kenya and the United States talking about how investments in Kenya ultimately increase prosperity for both Kenyans and Americans. And although there's lots more work to be done, our economic partnership between Kenya and the United States in facilities like this is strong and growing. This year, we celebrate 60 years of U.S.-Kenya relationships relations, as well as the exciting upcoming visit of President Ruto to the White House in just over a week. This is giving me a little bit of a heart attack, but we're good. <laughs> and I look forward to showcasing our broad and deep partnership and announcing many new deals that will further our economic ties. Now, as you may be well aware, I remain very bullish on Kenya's economic prospects, but I am not the only one. Many of you may have seen the article in Bloomberg. Bloomberg is a world leader in business reporting that touted Kenya as the Singapore of Africa in the June 2023 article. And the Economist Intelligence Unit just listed Kenya as among the ve very best places for doing business in 2024, one of only two African countries that made their lists of prospects. The other thing the government of Kenya is doing, and the reason that they are making, I think, such headway on these different lists and different articles, is the, the government of Kenya is working very hard to improve the business climate. Every country can improve their business climate, and we are seeing very tangible results in some of the changes that have been made in the last year. And I'll just highlight three of them that are very relevant to this sector. First is the elimination of the VAT on exported services. Elimination of the domestic equity requirement for ICT companies. And steps to revitalize Kenya's special economic zones to maximize their competitiveness. As CCI knows better than anyone, the lifting of the export services tax had immediate impact. Since the Ruto administration lifted that tax, JetBlue, AT&T, and T-Mobile have all started operations with CCI in Kenya. Over a thousand jobs have been created in, the building, in this building alone, with the potential to create an additional 3,000 jobs in the very near future, and 20,000 jobs with a bit longer time horizon. And I hear United Airlines in, is in the room. Hint, hint. Would you like to make an announcement? <laughs> in addition, business process outsourcing, or what we call BPO, and call center employment expanded in 2023 in Kenya by over 14,000 jobs. Incredible. By no means does this signal that we've achieved all our goals. This is just the beginning. And if Kenya is to pr truly become the Singapore of Africa, it needs to grow GDP between 6 to 8% a year and create 1 million new good-paying jobs every year here for the next 10 years. And BPO and call center is going to be a very big part of that objective. So I have been in Kenya as the U.S. ambassador for nearly two years, and I have had the privilege to get to know the Kenyan people, Kenyan officials, and the Kenyan and American businesses that are here. This is a vibrant spirit. There is a vibrant spirit of business in this country. This is the moment to capitalize on our partnership and advance our economies. This is the moment to create good paying jobs and improve our citizens' lives. Let's not waste this moment. Let's seize the moment. Thank you very much.